there are two things Allah connects together that you would not imagine would be connected together. Two cases that are very prominent that come to mind are Surah Al-Anfal and Surah Muhammad. Both of these surahs have something in common. Both of them are largely concerned with the battle of Badr. So this was the first time that the mission of the Prophet ﷺ shifted from preaching and delivering the message to actually being on the battlefield against the enemies of Allah, right? So this was a major change. Now, you would think if these are the surahs that have to do with battle, we're gonna learn all about how Allah's help is going to come, how the angels are going to support the believers, like Allah will send the unseen armies to support them, how the Muslims have to prepare for battle, how they cannot be cowards, how they have to be courageous, how there are going to be people from within the military, within the Muslim community that are going to try to undermine, because you know, some people don't want to go into battle, right? So they're going to try to undermine the military from within, how some people are going to be traitors, they're going to sell information, they're going to give information to the enemy, their loyalties are on the wrong side. All of these kinds of things that are all related to battle will be discussed in these surahs. And that's actually true. But then what Allah did is He stitched something else inside of both of these surahs that you didn't expect. Listen to this ayah. Then it's quite possible that if you turn your backs, Allah tells the Muslims that are thinking about turning their backs from battle. If you were to turn your backs from this cause, and tufsidu fil ardi, that you'll end up creating a lot of corruption in the entire region. And you will end up cutting family ties. This is the part that's strange. A surah entirely dedicated to battle, and Allah says, and you'll end up cutting family ties. Surah Al-Anfal, long surah about battle, 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 and battle, and at the end, وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ The people that are connected to us by blood, family relations, the relations of the womb, meaning anything that ties me to someone else because of my mother, my sibling, my uncles, blood connections. Allah says they have priority over each other in the Book of Allah. Now if there was a surah about family, and these ayat were in the surah about family, understandable. But what are these ayat about family ties and keeping the family tied together? What are they doing in a surah about battle? What is the connection between those? Allah is teaching us something about the goal of battle. When kings used to go into the battlefield, their goal was to conquer more territory, isn't it? When kings used to go into battle, their goal was to control the waterways or to capture new resources or to enslave people. You want to expand your territory. You want to build your empire. Or the goal for battle might even be survival. There are people that are coming to invade you. You have to fight back. So it's either offense or defense. This is what battle is. But Allah has given us in very subtle and beautiful language the ultimate goal why the Muslims fought, why the Sahaba were fighting. Actually, they were fighting to save humanity. And to save humanity, you have to save the family. The real goal is actually to keep the family ties together. SubhanAllah. Allah Azza wa Jal describes that the hypocrites, the worst of them, what does Allah say about them? He says, وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُصَلْ They cut apart what Allah commanded to keep together. They want to break families. Allah commanded families should stay together and they try to break them. So in these few minutes, I'm just going to give you a couple of quick pointers about why this is important for you and me now. First of all, Allah is saying some of the greatest sacrifices that the Sahaba were asked to make, they were asked to make those sacrifices and one of its great benefits, one of the great victories of Islam was going to be family ties will no longer be cut. That's going to be one of the great objectives. You would think when the victory is done, we will have that palace, we will have that island, we will have this navy, we'll have this port, we'll have these... No, you'll have family. You'll have family, subhanAllah. When Adam alayhi salam and our mother Hawa were both being sent to this earth, then Allah said, You're going to be enemies to each other because of the devil. How does the devil make us enemies? I don't know you, you don't know me, but you know where the real enemies are going to be? Inside your own family. He's going to try to make, you know, miscommunication, hatred, anger, you know, resentment, these kinds of feelings between father and son. He wants you to think, oh, my father doesn't get me. My father doesn't care about me. My father does this. My father does that. You don't know how he's been. You develop this resentment. And he wants to go into the father's heart and say, my son doesn't respect me. My son doesn't listen to me. He's in such a disappointment. He's so ungrateful. He's so this, he's so that. And he's building this hatred between father and son. He's building hatred between husband and wife. And then even further, sometimes he will use the parents to put hatred into the children. You'll find young people that are sitting at a dinner table and they're texting their friends going, hey, hey. <laughs> and then their mom says, who are you talking to? Nobody. What? 
Their face completely changes when they turn to their family. And their face becomes full of joy when they're talking to their friends, you know? Yeah, it's my mom, she's annoying, you know? What'd you write? Nothing. We're talking about homework. She gets on my nerves. What is that? You're sitting together, you're in the same house, you have the same address, legally, but the ties have been cut. They don't actually exist. There's no real communication left. And one of the goals of this religion was that families should actually be bound together. We are supposed to be humbled before the Book of Allah. I cannot use my anger towards someone to make them cut ties with the family. You can be very angry with your own. They have done a lot of wrong to you. I don't deny it. They're the worst people. They're shayateen. They make Fir'aun look like a nice guy. Great. But your son says, I want to go say salam to my uncle from my father's side. No. You know what they've done? You know those people? You know what? If you love me, and if you look, care about my feelings, you will not go talk to them. You see, that relationship between that boy and his uncle, no matter who his uncle is, his uncle could be Fir'aun. But that, that relationship was not made by you. And it was not made by his dad. That relationship was made by Allah. And that relationship, no one has the right to break it because Allah made it. And he says, Your feelings do not get to cut any relationships. There are men and women that get divorced. Divorce is allowed in our religion. It happens. And there are many children here that are children of divorced parents. And when you're children of divorced parents, one parent, the mother or the father, they make you feel bad for even calling the other parent. Who are you talking to? Oh, okay. Mm, yeah, I know you don't love me that much. And they, they'll make you feel bad even if, sometimes not even by words, but by gesture. This is called parental alienation. And you know what that is? That is a lack of fear of Allah. Your anger towards your ex-husband or your anger towards your ex-wife allowed you to cut family ties that Allah made and you're actively trying to do so. Good luck answering to Allah Azza wa Jal. These ayat came and at the end of these ayat, you know what Allah said? He said, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِ نَقْفَادُهَا Don't they then contemplate the Qur'an or some locks are put on their hearts? No, no, I've already made up my mind. I don't want to hear it. The locks are already there. I don't need to contemplate the Qur'an because when I contemplate the Qur'an, my heart is supposed to melt. My feelings are supposed to be surrendered to what Allah is saying. I have to look within myself. Am I guilty? of cutting family ties. Am I guilty? Am I doing this directly or indirectly? Am I, am I part of that? Because I cannot be. I cannot afford to be. Because that is actually one of the greatest crimes in the Quran that called for the Muslims even picking up their swords and shields to go risk their lives so that the future families can be saved. May Allah Azza wa give us a real understanding of his book and a real love and understanding of the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah Azza wa allow our families to stay together as Allah has commanded them to be.